This is a 100% free report. You may share it with everyone you know. Do you feel tired all the time? Are you exhausted or find a hard time getting out of bed in the mornings? Well, I have the perfect solution for your problems and reveal to you how to get more energy. Through extensive research and my own personal experiences, I have discovered the best ways to remain energetic and vibrant every day. In today's modern world, having a fast-paced life and a high-stress job is likely. A result of such a lifestyle is a regular feeling of tiredness and weariness, leading to poor health and mental exhaustion. Feeling tired all the time is common, but it is also very easily solved. Energy is a finite resource. Our bodies produce adrenaline and endorphins to give us the energy required to carry out our daily tasks, but it also requires time and rest to recharge the inner batteries. The Vibrant Vitality is a guide on how you can increase the amount of energy available to you and how you can reduce the downtime required for your body to recharge to its maximum capacity. Keep in mind that a lack of energy can be very subtle. You might not be bone tired all the time, falling into bed every time you get home from work. Sometimes, a lack of energy results in a lower drive to get things done, a lack of motivation and desire to do all the things you love. This low-grade energy drain is caused by many things, energy zappers that exist in your environment, the home or the workplace, a high-stress working environment or even a lack of time management. However, every energy zapper that might exist in your life is easily dealt with and overcome. There is no surefire method to gaining more energy that will work for everyone. Your bodies are unique and have different metabolisms and requirements. The comprehensive guide below will provide you with a variety of methods that will enhance your energy levels. Find the ones that work for you and your schedule. Implement them into your daily routine, but also don't be afraid to mix them up to keep things fresh. In this report, I will go through several ways to improve your energy levels and thus, improve the quality of your life. Firstly, I will give you a primer on detoxification and the removal of all the unwanted junk that is in our bodies, turning it slow and sluggish. Then, I will introduce the amazing concepts of Chakra and Guy, two ancient Eastern philosophies and the practices they inspire that will grant you amazing levels of energy but also improve your health and give you peace of mind. A balanced diet is also important to maintaining high energy levels, and I know exactly what you need. I have compiled a list of essential nutrients and supplements that will work in conjunction with the other methods in this book, for that added energy boost. So if you're ready to get started, turn to the next page and begin filling up your personal fuel tank. As wonderful as modern technology is, there is no avoiding the fact that some byproducts are harmful to the environment. But what mostly goes unnoticed is how these same byproducts are also harmful to your body, affecting the inner workings of your body and reducing its efficiency and output. There are also times when we purposely put these harmful products into our own bodies. Fast food, caffeine, and processed snacks are wonderful but have a long-lasting, unseen effect on our bodies that can be difficult to fix. If you have been feeling sluggish and mentally slow, lately, or have been having unexplained skin problems, or aches and pains in your body, it might mean that you have a buildup of toxins and other unwanted substances in your body. A body detox is in order. While detox, short for detoxifying, is a process usually associated with drug rehabilitation, it can also be used by the average person to improve the health and efficiency of your body's inner workings. Body detox is a practice that has existed for centuries amongst many cultures, including traditional Chinese medicine and Ayurvedic medicine, and has proved to be effective and, most importantly, safe. A body detox, simply put, is cleaning the blood and vital organs of toxins and other impurities. Most impurities and toxins are processed through the liver, but a detox will also clean your kidneys, intestines and lymph nodes. A good detox will have you feeling fresher, brighter and more energetic, as your body does not have as many impurities to process.
freeing up energy for other things. Toxins are introduced into your body through many sources. It most commonly comes from an unhealthy diet, or an abundance of caffeine or processed foods. The first step to detoxifying your body is to identify the harmful substances you indulge in and to cut down or remove completely the amount you take. Examples of toxins are alcohol, caffeine, cigarettes, refined sugars and saturated fats, all things that can be found in the average household. Beyond food, you should also minimize the usage of chemical-based products, such as household cleaners, shampoo, soap and deodorants and switch to natural alternatives. There are also toxins that are produced by your body naturally. Stress causes your body to trigger stress hormones and release adrenaline into your body, a product of the fight or flight response our brains have. If this adrenaline is not released in a natural way, typically by strenuous activity, it will remain in your system, creating toxins and slowing down the detoxification process your liver undergoes. It is advisable to reduce any stress-inducing events or to remove yourself from high-stress environments during your detoxification period. It is also advisable to use meditation, yoga or tai chi to increase relaxation and to reduce the amount of stress you feel. There are many ways to detox your body. Plenty of detox programs and recipes exist on the internet and are highly recommended by doctors and nutritionists. Many of these programs follow a seven-day schedule, as the entire detox process requires time for the body, especially the digestive system, to rest and recuperate. A detox program generally uses a liquid or juice fast, in which you do not consume anything but juice or water for up to two days. Nutritionists recommend lemon, or cranberry juice. Other recipes for detox drinks can be found online. 1. Eat a lot of fiber, such as brown rice and organically grown fruits and vegetables. Beets, radishes, cabbage and broccoli are high in fiber. 2. Take lots of vitamin C. Vitamin C helps the body produce glutathione, a liver compound that helps remove toxins from the system. 3. Drink plenty of water. 2 quarts a day is the recommended amount. 4. Go to a sauna. Sweating helps remove toxins as well. 5. Exercise. Do yoga, tai chi or jump rope an hour a day to help ease stress and stimulate the body processes. 6. Protect the liver by taking herbs such as dandelion root or milk thistle, or by drinking herbal green tea. 7. Practice deep breathing exercises to help improve THE body's blood circulatory system and allow oxygen to spread throughout your body. 8. Practice hydrotherapy at home. Take a very hot shower for 5 minutes, concentrating on your back and then switch to cold water for 30 seconds. Repeat this process 3 times and then relax on your bed for 30 minutes. You have probably heard or read about the concept of chakra and guy and of people who can master this life force energy to accomplish great things. While this sounds like a fantasy story out of a comic book, the practice of harnessing your body's inner energies have been around for centuries and are still in use today. The concept originates from Hindu, Buddhist and Taoist traditions, and is featured in yoga, tantric practices and the Tai Chi martial art. These concepts are not just limited to Eastern traditions, However, very similar traditions and practices exist around the world, in places such as Hawaii, Mana, and the Eastern Orthodox Church, Hesychasm. All of these different traditions focus on meditation, focus and concentration to harness this energy flow and to ensure that there are no barriers, physical or mental, that prevent this energy from doing its work. While the actual practices vary. The underlying concepts are the same and have prevailing effects on several cultures worldwide. Harnessing this energy or life force will provide you with a larger reservoir of energy to use, which in turn will increase your health, your brain power and improve your physical attributes.
One of the most common results of harnessing your life force is an improved reaction time as well as increased strength, endurance and balance. While there are many different ways of accessing this internal energies and using them to your advantage, we will focus on the two most popular and long-lasting traditions. Chakra and Guy the concept of the chakra originated from Hindu texts that have existed since 1500 BC. Making this tradition over 3500 years old. The word chakra, when translated from its original Sanskrit, means wheel, or turning. This is representative of the concept of the wheel-like vortices that exist within the human body. These vortices act like gates, allowing for the reception and transmission of energies. They are also called force centers and are usually represented as wheels or flowers that expand outward. The number of chakras that exist in the human body generally varies, but the most commonly accepted and believed number is of the seven chakras. Each chakra is responsible for and located at a different part of the body, as shown in the following image. The chakras are parts of the subtle energy body, or the psycho-spiritual form of the human body along with the energy channels, nadi, and the subtle winds, pranas. The seven chakras are aligned along a central nadi known as the sushumna, which runs down or is inside of the spine. Each of the seven chakras are said to control the flow of life energy and is believed to influence the bodily functions that lie near its region of the spine. The chakras also correlate to the basic states of consciousness and are the nexus of the biophysical energy of the human body. The subtle energies of the chakra are explored through various methods such as acupuncture, reiki, aromatherapy, yoga and tai chi. The methods all focus on promoting the energy flow that are integral to the chakra system, in order to allow the human body and psyche to have balance and stability allowing for an eventual state of deep realization and enlightenment. This is achieved when the Kundalini, energy of consciousness, is allowed to flow from the root chakra all the way to crown chakra. Modern scientists have also theorized that the seven chakras are metaphysical counterparts to the endocrine glands in the human body. The endocrine system is an informational system of glands that secrete hormones into the body. These glands are slow to activate, but the effects can last from hours to weeks. These hormones are responsible for the regulation of muscle growth and developments, metabolism, tissue function and mood in the human body. The importance of the endocrine system cannot be doubted, as it regulates your mental and physical health. Mastery of the chakra allows you to be in control of your endocrine system letting you induce these hormones into your own body for your own improvement. The final effect is that of physical health and strength, mental stability and peace of mind, leading to increased energy reservoirs to carry you through the day. Each person concentrates on a different chakra, based on their upbringing, their natural inclinations and their everyday needs. To understand how to bring all your seven chakras into balance and to find out which of your energy centers are blocking the Kundalini, you first need to understand what each of the chakras do. Sahasrara is the thousand petaled lotus and is widely regarded as the point of pure consciousness. This chakra is located at the crown of the head, or above the crown and is represented by the color white. This chakra is associated with inner wisdom enlightenment and the death of the human body and symbolizes detachment from illusion, which is essential to obtaining a higher consciousness and the connection to life force energy that permeates the entire universe. Sahasrara is the chakra from which all other chakras emanate and allows one to achieve a connection to the divine. This chakra deals with the karmic release, physical action through meditation, mental action through universal consciousness and study and emotional action through inner peace. Meditating upon the Sahasrara is believed to bring about the Siddhis, or occult powers, that allow one to do whatever they wish. The crown chakra is believed to be the representation of the pituitary gland, which communicates with the rest of the endocrine system and connects to the central nervous system. In short, the crown chakra is responsible for making sure your entire body is able to function and is sync with the brain. Symbolized by a lotus with two petals, 
Ajna is associated with the colors violet, indigo and deep blue. Located in the brain directly behind the eyebrow center, Ajna translates to command and is considered to be the eye of intuition. Whenever you see something with your mind's eye, or in a dream, you are seeing it with Ajna. The brow chakra is the bridge that links Sorus to their disciples and allows for mind-to-mind -mind communication between two people. Known as the third eye chakra, Ajna is important for balancing the higher and lower selves, the human consciousness with the primal instinct and entrusting inner guidance. Ajna also deals in mental action through visual consciousness, and emotional action through intuitive clarity. Ajna is the representation of the pineal gland, a light-sensitive gland that produces melatonin and regulates sleep and waking up. Vishuddha is portrayed as a silver crescent inside a white circle, ringed by 16 pale blue or turquoise petals. Vishuddha is located in the neck near the spine and is known as the purification center. Vishuddha is associated with higher discrimination as well as creativity and self-expression. Vishuddha relates to growth through expression and communication, speaking and listening. When Vishuddha is closed, you go through decay and death. When Vishuddha is open, negative experiences are transformed into wisdom and learning. The state of your Vishuddha, whether it is clean or polluted, is responsible for your successes or failures in life. This chakra is typically closed by guilt and remorseful feelings, which in turn will block the energy from traveling upwards. Vishuddha can be opened or cleaned by meditation, or by singing or practicing instrumental music. Vishuddha controls several functions. The chakra physically governs communication, emotionally governs independence, mentally governs fluent thought and spiritually governs a sense of security. Vishuddha is the representation of the thyroid gland, the gland that promotes growth and maturation. The heart chakra is symbolized by a circular flower with 12 million petals and it translates to unbeaten. Anahata is positioned in the central channel behind the spine in the heart region. Anahata is described as the tiny flame that resides in the heart and is associated with the element of air, the sense of touch and any actions taken by the hands. This chakra is also associated with the ability to make decisions outside of the realm of karma and fate. In Hindu tradition, men is bound by the law's karma, but Anahata allows him to make his own decisions by following his heart. However, the heart chakra is based on man's higher self and not his unfulfilled emotions or the desires of his lower nature. The heart chakra is also associated with unconditional love and compassion, charity, equilibrium, well-being and other complex emotions. Mediation upon this chakra allows a person to become influential increases their sexual desirability and provides complete control over the senses. Anahata physically governs circulation, emotionally governs unconditional love for yourself and others, mentally governs passion and spiritually governs devotion. Anahata is the representation of the thymus, which is located in the chest and is an element of the immune system. It produces T-cells which are responsible for fighting off diseases and can be adversely affected by stress. Manibara is portrayed by a downward pointing red triangle within a bright yellow circle ringed by ten black petals and is located at the spine directly behind the navel or the solar plexus. Manibara is the center of dynamism, energy, willpower and achievement and radiates energy throughout the entire body. It is also associated with the element of fire and to digestion, to the sense of sight and the action of movement. Manibara is the source of ether psychic intuition, a sense of knowing, in Western culture this is known as a gut instinct. Many experts advise listening to the Manibara as it can help you make better decisions in many different aspects of your life. Manibara physically controls digestion, mentally controls personal power emotionally controls expansiveness, and spiritually controls all matters of growth. This chakra is the representation of the islets of Langerhans, a group of cells in the pancreas, as well as the outer adrenal glands and the adrenal cortex. These cells play an important role in digestion and the conversion of food into energy for the body. 
This chakra is symbolized by a black lotus inside of which is a crescent moon with six orange petals. Swadhisthana is located in the sacrum, a large triangular bone at the base of the spine, specifically at the tailbone. This chakra is associated with the unconscious and emotion, the sense of taste, the tongue, reproduction and the genitals. Swadhisthana also contains unconscious desires, especially those of the sexual nature. Due to this, it is said that raising the energy of consciousness above this chakra is extremely difficult. Swadhisthana's key issues are relationships, violence, addictions, basic emotional needs and pleasure. Swadhisthana physically governs reproduction, mentally governs creativity, emotionally governs joy, and spiritually governs enthusiasm. Swadhisthana corresponds to the testes or the ovaries which are responsible for the production of sex hormones, as well as the reproduction system. On a more general sense, this chakra is also related to the genitourinary system and the adrenal glands. Miradhara is described as a yellow square lotus, surrounded by eight spears on the sides and corners and is has for red petals. This chakra is located in the perineum, the region between the genital and the anus. Miradhara is the root or the foundation chakra, and is the transcendental basis of physical nature. It is where the energy of consciousness begins its journey from the physical to the spiritual realm. Miradhara is related to instinct, security, survival, and human potential. Mediation on the Miradhara allows for improved physical health and increased mental faculties and intelligence. The key issues of this chakra involve sexuality, lust and obsession. Miladhara physically governs sexuality, mentally governs stability, emotionally governs sensuality, and spiritually governs a sense of security. There are no glands located at the region of this chakra, but it is believed to relate to the gonads and the adrenal medulla, which is responsible for the fight or flight response. As mentioned earlier, this response is triggered during times of physical danger, or in high stress situations. Kai is an important concept in traditional Chinese culture and is an active principle forming part of any living thing. The literal translation of Kai is breath or air but is also frequently translated into life energy or energy flow. The ancient Chinese describe Kai as life force and believed it to permeate everything in the universe and linked their surroundings together. Kai is the flow of energy surrounding and permeating the body, forming a cohesive and functioning unit. They also believed that understanding the rhythm and the flow of Kai through exercise and treatment would provide stability and longevity. Kai is not a solely human property. The wind is considered to be the Kai of the earth and the cosmic concepts of yin and yang are also representations of Kai. Elements of fire and water also have Kai, as do animals and insects. The ancient Chinese philosopher Zhuangzi, 369 BC, 286 BC, said, Human beings are born, because of, the accumulation of Kai. When it accumulates there is life. When it dissipates there is death. There is one Kai that connects and pervades everything in the world. Zhuangzi also says that Kai is also the energy that connects heaven to earth, the highest yin is the most restrained. The highest yang is the most exuberant. The restrained comes forth from heaven. The exuberant issues forth from earth. The two intertwine and penetrate forming a harmony and, as a result, things are born. The ancient Chinese did not have any concept of radiant energy, energy that radiates outwards, such as heat, and used Kai to explain such phenomenon. This formed the basis of a lot of their philosophy, culture and medicine, as the promotion of a good Kai flow became a priority for traditional Chinese culture. A lot of their practices survived until today and remain popular, even in Western countries. Traditions such as acupuncture and traditional Chinese medicine are well known throughout the modern world, while practices such as Feng Shui Qigong and certain Chinese martial arts remain more esoteric and specialized. Acupuncture is a traditional Chinese practice that uses solid, 
thin needles to treat patients. As Kai is believed to flow throughout the human body, acupuncture attempts to stimulate and correct imbalances to that flow by affecting anatomical locations under the skin known as acupuncture points. Acupuncture has several benefits, including improvement of general health, relieving pain, treating infertility and preventing or treating diseases. The general theory behind acupuncture is that bodily functions are regulated by the flow chi and that disruptions of this flow are responsible for diseases and other ailments. Chi is aided in its flow throughout the body by channels known as meridians. Traditional Chinese medicine identifies 12 regular and 8 extraordinary meridians and these meridians connect to the body's vital organs. Acupuncture points are usually found at specified locations along the meridians. There are also a number of acupuncture points with specified locations outside of the meridians and are known as extraordinary points and often credited with special therapeutic properties. A third category of acupuncture points called Eishi, points have no fixed location but represent tender or reflexive points appearing in the course of pain syndromes. Known in the East as Tai Kai Kuen, or Supreme Ultimate Fist, this martial art is widely practiced for both its defense and health benefits. The core aspects of Tai Kai involve three primary features, health, meditation and martial art. As Tai Kai requires the practitioner to concentrate the mind on the movements of the form, an unhealthy or distracted person might find it difficult to find the state of calmness necessary to use Tai Kai as a martial art. As such, the health training of Tai Kai attempts to relieve the physical effects stress has on the body and the mind. When the practitioner is able to focus the mind on the movements of the form, he will also be able to bring about a state of mental calm and clarity. When both the mind and the body are able to assimilate the movements of Tai Kai, only then will the student be able to use it as an effective form of self-defense, as a final proof of their understanding of the art. Practicing Tai Kai has been proven to aid balance control, flexibility, cardiovascular fitness and its gentle movements are able to burn more calories than surfing and nearly as many as downhill skiing. Research has also shown that Tai Kai also has a positive effect on mental stress, anxiety and depression. It also has an effect on noradrenaline and cortisol production, which affects the mood and the heart rate. Qigong is the practice of aligning your breath, your movements and your awareness for the purposes of exercise, healing and meditation. Qigong has its roots in Chinese martial arts, medicine and philosophy and is seen as a practice to balance the Kai flow. Typical Qigong practice involves rhythmic breathing in coordination with slow stylized repetition of fluid movement, and a calm mindful state. While the principles of Qigong sounds like Tai Kai, it is not a martial art and not meant for self-defense. Qigong is a meditative practice where both the mind and the body are active participants. The two practices, while separate, are still closely related and sometimes used in a complementary fashion. Philosophically, Qigong is believed to aid in the development of human potential and allows access to higher realms of awareness and to awaken your true nature. Physically, Qigong strengthens and stretches the body and improves fluid, blood, synovial and lymph. Movement, enhances balance and proprioception and builds awareness of how the body moves. Qigong is also used as a healing art, by bringing into balance the body's meridians and promoting the body's self-healing capabilities. The practice has been proven to enhance cardiovascular function and increases longevity, as well as improving the immune system. Relaxation techniques for stress relief. Finding the relaxation exercises that work for you for many of us, relaxation means zoning out in front of the TV at the end of a stressful day. But this does little to reduce the damaging effects of stress. To effectively combat stress, we need to activate the body's natural relaxation response. You can do this by practicing relaxation techniques such as deep breathing, meditation, rhythmic exercise, and yoga. Fitting these activities into your life can help reduce everyday stress and boost your energy and mood.
relaxation technique hash 1, breathing meditate on for stress relief with its focus on full, cleansing breaths, deep breathing is a simple, yet powerful, relaxation technique. It's easy to learn, can be practiced almost anywhere, and provides a quick way to get your stress levels in check. Deep breathing is the cornerstone of many other relaxation practices, too, and can be combined with other relaxing elements such as aromatherapy and music. All you really need is a few minutes and a place to stretch out. Practicing deep breathing meditation The key to deep breathing is to breathe deeply from the abdomen, getting as much fresh air as possible in your lungs. When you take deep breaths from the abdomen, Rather than shallow breaths from your upper chest, you inhale more oxygen. The more oxygen you get, the less tense, short of breath, and anxious you feel. Sit comfortably with your back straight. Put one hand on your chest and the other on your stomach. Breathe in through your nose. The hand on your stomach should rise. The hand on your chest should move very little. Exhale through your mouth pushing out as much air as you can while contracting your abdominal muscles. The hand on your stomach should move in as you exhale, but your other hand should move very little. Continue to breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth. Try to inhale enough so that your lower abdomen rises and falls. Count slowly as you exhale. If you find it difficult breathing from your abdomen while sitting up, try lying on the floor. Put a small book on your stomach, and try to breathe so that the book rises as you inhale and falls as you exhale. Relaxation Technique Hash 2 Progressive Muscle Relaxity On for stress relief Progressive muscle relaxation involves a two-step process in which you systematically tense and relax different muscle groups in the body. With regular practice, progressive muscle relaxation gives you an intimate familiarity with what tension as well as complete relaxation dash feels like in different parts of the body. This awareness helps you spot and counteract the first signs of the muscular tension that accompanies stress. And as your body relaxes, so will your mind. You can combine deep breathing with progressive muscle relaxation for an additional level of stress relief. Practicing progressive muscle relaxation before practicing progressive muscle relaxation. Consult with your doctor if you have a history of muscle spasms, back problems, or other serious injuries that may be aggravated by tensing muscles. Most progressive muscle relaxation practitioners start at the feet and work their way up to the face. For a sequence of muscle groups to follow, see the box below. Loosen your clothing, take off your shoes, and get comfortable. Take a few minutes to relax. Breathing in and out in slow, deep breaths. When you're relaxed and ready to start, shift your attention to your right foot. Take a moment to focus on the way it feels. Slowly tense the muscles in your right foot, squeezing as tightly as you can. Hold for a count of ten. Relax your right foot. Focus on the tension flowing away and the way your foot feels as it becomes limp and loose. Stay in this relaxed state for a moment, breathing deeply and slowly. When you're ready, shift your attention to your left foot. Follow the same sequence of muscle tension and release. Move slowly up through your body, contracting and relaxing the muscle groups as you go. It may take some practice at first, but try not to tense muscles other than those intended. Relaxation Technique Hash 3 Body scan meditate on for stress relief. A body scan is similar to progressive muscle relaxation, except instead of tensing and relaxing muscles, you simply focus on the sensations in each part of your body. Practicing body scan meditation. Lie on your back, legs uncrossed, arms relaxed at your sides, eyes open or closed. Focus on your breathing, comma, allowing your stomach to rise as you inhale and fall as you exhale. Breathe deeply for about two minutes, until you start to feel comfortable and relaxed. Turn your focus to the toes of your right foot. Notice any sensations you feel. 
while continuing to also focus on your breathing. Imagine each deep breath flowing to your toes. Remain focused on this area for 1 to 2 minutes. Move your focus to the sole of your right foot. Tune into any sensations you feel in that part of your body and imagine each breath flowing from the sole of your foot. After 1 or 2 minutes, move your focus to your right ankle and repeat. Move to your calf, knee, thigh, hip, and then repeat the sequence for your left leg. From there, move up the torso, through the lower back and abdomen, the upper back and chest, and the shoulders. Pay close attention to any area of the body that causes you pain or discomfort. Move your focus to the fingers on your right hand and then move up to the wrist, forearm, elbow, upper arm, and shoulder. Repeat for your left arm. Then move through the neck and throat, and finally all the regions of your face, the back of the head, and the top of the head. Pay close attention to your jaw, chin, lips, tongue, nose, cheeks, eyes, forehead, temples and scalp. When you reach the very top of your head, let your breath reach out beyond your body and imagine yourself hovering above yourself. After completing the body scan, relax for a while in silence and stillness, noting how your body feels. Then open your eyes slowly. Take a moment to stretch, if necessary. You may want to try these methods and find out which one is appropriate for you and suitable for your lifestyle and adopt it. Exercise, mediation and harmonizing your energy flow with the universe are all important factors in improving your energy levels. However, the body also needs fuel and essential nutrients to help it perform its tasks. Furthermore, Cutting down on your intake of wasteful and toxic substances will also make the body more efficient. Here are a few helpful tips to help your body out and give you more energy. 1. Eat more alkaline foods. The diet of the average person consists of processed foods with high acidic content. Greens and berries are high on alkaline content, which will help your bring your blood acid alkali levels into balance. Two. Eat more fats. While this sounds counterintuitive at first, allow me to clarify, the typical fats found in your average meal are usually processed and unhealthy. The mix of fats found in fish and dark, leafy vegetables, however, are perfect for the brain. Half of the brain's weight is composed of fats that insulate it. More insulation allows signals to be transmitted faster and smoother. 3. Have ginseng. Ginseng is known to have energy boosting properties and is also an adaptogen, it builds resistance to stress and increases energy levels. Taking a ginseng supplement or drinking tea with ginseng can help to improve your energy. 4. Get more proteins. If you have a choice, always have lean proteins over fats or carbs. Seafood, lean pork or chicken, white meat are high in protein and will help you feel fuller for longer. It also prevents blood sugar spikes and gives you a more steady energy flow. Having eggs for breakfast is also highly recommended. 5. Take your vitamins. A glass of orange juice a day is all the vitamin C you need. Vitamin C helps absorb more nutrients from food. B vitamins are also important as they are involved in converting blood sugar into usable energy. 6. Trade in your carbs. Typically, we take simple or high carbohydrates, like sugar and white bread. Instead, we want to take complex carbs like whole wheat bread, and other grains, fruits and vegetables, meats and pasta. 7. Get more fiber. Soluble fiber slows down the rate at which your body absorbs sugars. This results in preventing sugar highs and crashes. Insoluble fiber prevents constipation. Both are good for you and you should get plenty of it. Nuts, grains, beans and oats are examples of high fiber foods. Beyond these essentials, it is also advisable for you to cut down on your caffeine intake. You don't have to stop drinking coffee altogether but be smart in how you have your caffeine. 
drink your coffee earlier in the day to avoid insomnia and have it in moderation. The energy boost caffeine gives is useful, but it also builds up a dependency. Another good source of caffeine is chocolate, which provides an endorphin boost as well. Milk chocolate has less caffeine than dark chocolate and is recommended. Remember the key word, moderation. A piece of chocolate after lunch is all you will need. Another source of fatigue is dehydration. It isn't something you'll notice, as it will creep up on you. Make sure you stay hydrated. The old standby of 8 glasses a day is the recommended amount. Avoid energy drinks, however, as the energy it provides always results in a crash and an eventual energy deficiency. Easy tips for planning a healthy diet and sticking to it. Healthy eating is not about strict nutrition philosophies, staying unrealistically thin, or depriving yourself of the foods you love. Rather, it's about feeling great, having more energy, stabilizing your mood, and keeping yourself as healthy as possible dash all of which can be achieved by learning some nutrition basics and using them in a way that works for you. You can expand your range of healthy food choices and learn how to plan ahead to create and maintain a tasty, healthy diet. Healthy eating tip hash 1, set yourself up for success to set yourself up for success. Think about planning a healthy diet as a number of small, manageable steps rather than one big drastic change. If you approach the changes gradually and with commitment, you will have a healthy diet sooner than you think. Simplify. Instead of being overly concerned with counting calories or measuring portion sizes, think of your diet in terms of color, variety, and freshness. This way it should be easier to make healthy choices. Focus on finding foods you love and easy recipes that incorporate a few fresh ingredients. Gradually, your diet will become healthier and more delicious. Start slow and make changes to your eating habits over time. Trying to make your diet healthy overnight isn't realistic or smart. Changing everything at once usually leads to cheating or giving up on your new eating plan. Make small steps, like adding a salad full of different color vegetables to your diet once a day or switching from butter to olive oil when cooking. Every change you make to improve your diet matters. You don't have to be perfect and you don't have to completely eliminate foods you enjoy to have a healthy diet. The long-term goal is to feel good, have more energy, and reduce the risk of cancer and disease. Don't let your missteps derail you every healthy food choice you make counts. Healthy eating tip hash 2, moderation is key people often think of healthy eating as an all or nothing proposition, but a key foundation for any healthy diet is moderation. But what is moderation? How much is a moderate amount? That really depends on you and your overall eating habits. The goal of healthy eating is to develop a diet that you can maintain for life, not just a few weeks or months, or until you've hit your ideal weight. So try to think of moderation in terms of balance. Despite what certain fad diets would have you believe, we all need a balance of carbohydrates, protein, fat, fiber, vitamins, and minerals to sustain a healthy body. For most of us, moderation or balance means eating less than we do now. More specifically, it means eating far less of the unhealthy stuff unrefined sugar, saturated fat, for example and more of the healthy such as fresh fruit and vegetables. But it doesn't mean eliminating the foods you love. Eating bacon for breakfast once a week. For example, could be considered moderation if you follow it with a healthy lunch and dinner but not if you follow it with a box of donuts and a sausage pizza. If you eat 100 calories of chocolate one afternoon, balance it out by deducting 100 calories from your evening meal. If you're stll hungry, fire ll up with an extra serving of fresh vegetables. Try not to think of certain foods as off limits. When you ban certain foods or food groups, it is natural to want those foods more, and then feel like a failure if you give in to temptation. If you are drawn towards sweet, salty, or unhealthy foods, start by reducing portion sizes and not eating them as often.
later you may find yourself craving them less or thinking of them as only occasional indulgences. Think smaller portions. Serving sizes have ballooned recently, particularly in restaurants. When dining out, choose a starter, split a dish with a friend, and don't order supersized anything. At home, use smaller plates, think about serving sizes in realistic terms, and start small. If you don't feel satisfied at the end of a meal, try adding more leafy green vegetables or rounding off the meal with fresh fruit. Visual cues can help with portion sizes your serving of meat, fish, or chicken should be the size of a deck of cards, a slice of bread should be the size of a CD case, and half a cup of mashed potato, rice, or pasta is about the size of a traditional light bulb. Healthy eating tip hash 3, it's not just what you eat, it's how you eat healthy eating is about more than the food on your plate dash it is also about how you think about food. Healthy eating habits can be learned and it is important to slow down and think about food as nourishment rather than just something to gulp down in between meetings or on the way to pick up the kids. Take time to chew your food and enjoy meal times. Chew your food slowly, savoring every bite. We tend to rush though our meals, forgetting to actually taste the flavors and feel the textures of our food. Reconnect with the joy of eating. Eat with others whenever possible. Eating with other people has numerous social and emotional benefits, particularly for children. And also allows you to model healthy eating habits. Eating in front of the TV or computer often leads to mindless overeating. Listen to your body. Ask yourself if you are really hungry, or have a glass of water to see if you are thirsty instead of hungry. During a meal, stop eating before you feel full. It actually takes a few minutes for your brain to tell your body that it has had enough food, so eat slowly. Eat breakfast, and eat smaller meals throughout the day. A healthy breakfast can jumpstart your metabolism, and eating small, healthy meals throughout the day rather than the standard three large meals keeps your energy up and your metabolism going. Avoid eating at night. Try to eat dinner earlier in the day and then fast for 14-16 hours until breakfast the next morning. Early studies suggest that this simple dietary adjustment eating only when you're most active and giving your digestive system a long break each day may help to regulate weight. After dinner snacks tend to be high in fat and calories so are best avoided, anyway. Healthy RTNG Tip Hash 4 Fill up on colorful fruits and vegetables. Fruits and vegetables are the foundation of a healthy diet. They are low in calories and nutrient dense, which means they are packed with vitamins, minerals, antioxidants, and fiber. Try to eat a rainbow of fruits and vegetables every day and with every meal the brighter the better. Colorful, deeply colored fruits and vegetables contain higher concentrations of vitamins, minerals, and antioxidants and different colors provide different benefits, so eat a variety. Aim for a minimum of five portions each day. Some great choices include, greens. Branch out beyond bright and dark green lettuce. Gale, mustard greens, broccoli, and Chinese cabbage are just a few of the options. All packed with calcium magnesium, iron, potassium, zinc, and vitamins A, C, E, and K. Sweet vegetables. Naturally sweet vegetables such as corn, carrots, beets, sweet potatoes, yams, onions, and squash add healthy sweetness to your meals and reduce your cravings for other sweets. Fruit. Fruit is a tasty, satisfying way to fill up on fiber, vitamins, and antioxidants. Berries are cancer fighting. Apples provide fiber, oranges and mangoes offer vitamin C, and so on. Healthy RTNG Tip Hash 5, Eat more healthy carbs and whole grains Choose healthy carbohydrates and fiber sources, especially whole grains, for long-lasting energy. In addition to being delicious and satisfying, whole grains are rich in phytochemicals and antioxidants, which help to protect against coronary heart disease, certain cancers and diabetes.
Studies have shown people who eat more whole grains tend to have a healthier heart. A quick definition of healthy carbs and unhealthy carbs dash healthy carbs sometimes known as good carbs include whole grains, beans, fruits, and vegetables. Healthy carbs are digested slowly, helping you feel full longer and keeping blood sugar and insulin levels stable. Dash unhealthy carbs or bad carbs are foods such as white flour, refined sugar, and white rice that have been stripped of all bran, fiber, and nutrients. Unhealthy carbs digest quickly and cause spikes in blood sugar levels and energy. Healthy eating tip hash 6. Enjoy healthy fats and avoid unhealthy fats. Good sources of healthy fat are needed to nourish your brain, heart, and cells, as well as your hair, skin, and nails. Foods rich in certain omega-3 fats called EPA and DA are particularly important and can reduce a cardiovascular disease, improve your mood, and help prevent dementia. Add to you healthy diet, monounsaturated fats, from plant oils like canola oil, peanut oil, and olive oil, as well as avocados, nuts like almonds, hazelnuts, and pecans, and seeds such as pumpkin, sesame. Polyunsaturated fats, including omega-3 and omega-6 fatty acids, found in fatty fish such as salmon, herring, mackerel, anchovies, sardines, and some cold water fish oil supplements. Other sources of polyunsaturated fats are unheated sunflower, corn, soybean, flax seed oils, and walnuts. Reduce or eliminate from your diet, saturated fats, found primarily in animal sources including red meat and whole milk dairy products. Trans fats, found in vegetable shortenings, some margarines, crackers, candies, cookies, snack foods, fried foods, baked goods, and other processed foods made with partially hydrogenated vegetable oils. Healthy eating tip hash 7, put protein in perspective protein gives us the energy to get up and go and keep going. Protein in food is broken down into the 20 amino acids that are the body's basic building blocks for growth and energy, and essential for maintaining cells, tissues, and organs. A lack of protein in our diet can slow growth, reduce muscle mass, lower immunity, and weaken the heart and respiratory system. Protein is particularly important for children, whose bodies are growing and changing daily. Here are some guidelines for including protein in your healthy diet, try different types of protein. Whether or not you are a vegetarian, trying different protein sources such as beans, nuts, seeds, peas, tofu, and soy products will open up new options for healthy meal times. Beans, black beans, navy beans, garbanzos, and lentils are good options. Nuts, almonds, walnuts, pistachios, and pecans are great choices. Soy products, try tofu, soy milk, tempeh, and veggie burgers for a change. Downsize your portions of protein. Many people in the West eat too much protein. Try to move away from protein being the center of your meal. Focus on equal servings of protein, whole grains, and vegetables. Focus on quality sources of protein, like fresh fish, chicken or turkey, tofu, eggs, beans, or nuts. When you are having meat, chicken, or turkey, buy meat that is free of hormones and antibiotics. Healthy eating tip hash 8, add calcium for strong bones. Calcium is one of the key nutrients that your body needs in order to stay strong and healthy. It is an essential building block for lifelong bone health in both men and women, as well as many other important functions. You and your bones will benefit from eating plenty of calcium-rich foods, limiting foods that deplete your body's calcium stores, and getting your daily dose of magnesium and vitamins D and K dash nutrients that help calcium do its job. Recommended calcium levels are 1000 mg per day. 1200 mg if you are over 50 years old. Take a vitamin D and calcium supplement if you don't get enough of these nutrients from your diet. 
Good sources of calcium include dairy. Dairy products are rich in calcium in a form that is easily digested and absorbed by the body. Sources include milk, yogurt, and cheese. Vegetables and greens. Many vegetables, especially leafy green ones, are rich. Sources of calcium. Triturnip greens, mustard greens, collard greens, kale, romaine lettuce, celery, broccoli, fennel, cabbage, summer squash, green beans, Brussels sprouts, asparagus, and criminae mushrooms. Healthy eating tip hash 9, limit sugar and salt if you succeed in planning your diet around fiber rich fruits, vegetables, whole grains, lean protein, and good fats. You may find yourself naturally cutting back on foods that can get in the way of your healthy diet, sugar and salt. Sugar sugar causes energy ups and downs and can add to health and weight problems. Unfortunately, reducing the amount of candy, cakes, and desserts we eat is only part of the solution. Often you may not even be aware of the amount of sugar you're consuming each day. Large amounts of added sugar can be hidden in foods such as bread, canned soups and vegetables, pasta sauce, margarine, instant mashed potatoes, frozen dinners fast food, soy sauce, and ketchup. Here are some tips. Avoid sugary drinks. 1 12 Oz soda has about 10 teaspoons of sugar in it, more than the daily recommended limit. Try sparkling water with lemon or a splash of fruit juice. Eat naturally sweet food such as fruit, peppers, or natural peanut butter too. Satisfy your sweet tooth. Salt Most of us consume too much salt in our diets. Eating too much salt can cause high blood pressure and lead to other health problems. Try to limit sodium intake to 1500 to 2300 mg per day, the equivalent of 1 teaspoon of salt. Avoid processed or pre-packaged foods. Processed foods like canned soups or Frozen dinners contain hidden sodium that quickly surpasses the recommended limit. As human beings, we are creatures of typically bad habits. These habits are sometimes factors in the general lack of energy we suffer every day. Dropping these bad habits will let us recover this otherwise wasted energy and put it to better use. In addition, there are a lot of other little activities and exercises we can do to give us a boost of energy or a refresher during the low points of the day. Below are 5 tricks and tips I personally use to give me the energy I need. Try them out, you'll find that they'll be far more effective than you'd expect. Most people do a minimum of physical or strenuous activity each day. They walk from the bed to the bathroom to the kitchen for breakfast and then to the car and spend most of the day in a chair. Your body will assume that it is actually at rest and will not produce much energy for you. So move your body, do some yoga, some stretching, some deep breathing, even exercise. It might sound like a paradox, working out to get more energy, but what you're actually doing is training your body to produce more energy on a daily basis. It doesn't matter whether you're alone or in an office full of people, rocking out to a loud, energetic song does wonders to your body and your mind. Invite you co-workers to play along, the trick is finding a song all of you can enjoy. The three minutes of head bobbing and singing aloud is enough of an adrenaline boost that can carry you until night time, and you'll find yourself singing when you're working late at night. All our bodies are different and have a natural ebb and flow of energy. You will have high points and low points at different times of the day. Typically, our energy spikes highest during mid-morning, drops during the afternoon and we get another high in the early evening. Once you are able to pinpoint your specific rhythms of your body's energy flow, you will be able to prioritize your tasks to make use of your energy spikes. Take a nap for 5 to 10 minutes during the afternoons, but do it in your chair. Don't lie down or you won't be able to get up. Be careful about how long you nap for, because sleeping for any longer than 10 minutes will instead make you more tired and would knock you out for the rest of the day, as your body will think that it is time to rest. This includes the weekends.
Your body needs a clock to function with and it needs to follow that schedule pretty strictly. If you stay up late on one Friday night, your body will start to stay awake when it should be asleep, cutting into your required 8 hours of sleep. Or conversely, your body might be sleeping when it should be awake, like during a meeting. The key to this is to go to bed the same time every night. Your body will adjust to the 8 hours of sleep it gets and will automatically wake you up. Easy exercise tips. Making exercise part of your everyday life of all the different ways to improve your physical and mental health, exercise is one of the easiest and safest methods. It is also one of the most effective. Even a little regular exercise can help ease depression, boost energy and mood, and relieve stress. But you don't have to be a fitness fanatic to reap the benefits. No matter your age, health limitations, or fitness levels, there are enjoyable ways to use physical activity to feel better every day. The life-changing benefits of exercise Exercise is not just about aerobic capacity and muscle size. Sure, exercise improves your health and your physique, but it has even greater benefits for your energy, mood, and brain power. A study in the AXA Journal of Health and Fitness asked long-term exercisers those who had been regularly exercising for an average of 13 years what motivated them to continue exercising. Rather than being motivated by building muscle or flattening their stomachs, for example, most exercisers cited the feelings of well-being they derived from exercise, along with increased pep and energy, and how exercise helped them sleep better and made them more relaxed. The important thing to remember is that these benefits can be achieved without spending hours pumping weights in a gym or pounding on a treadmill. Regular mild to moderate exercise can improve your life by easing stress and anxiety. A 20-minute bike ride won't sweep away life's troubles, but exercising regularly helps you take charge of anxiety and reduce stress. Aerobic exercise releases hormones that relieve stress and promote a sense of well-being. Lifting your mood. Exercise can treat mild to moderate depression as effectively as antidepressant medication. Exercise also releases endorphins, powerful chemicals in your brain that energizes your spirits and makes you feel good. Sharpening brain power. The same endorphins that make you feel better also help you concentrate and feel mentally sharp for tasks at hand. Exercise also stimulates the growth of new brain cells and helps prevent age-related decline. Improving self-esteem. Regular activity is an investment in your mind, body, and soul. When it becomes habit, it can foster your sense of self-worth and make you feel strong and powerful. Boosting energy. Increasing your heart rate several times a week will give you more get up and go. Start off with just a few minutes of exercise a day, and increase your workout as you feel more energized. Obstacles to exercise, what's holding you back? Despite all the life-changing benefits, many of us still think of exercise as a chore, either something that we don't have time for, or something that's only suitable for the young or the athletic. There are many commonly held myths about exercise that make it seem more arduous and painful than it has to be. Overcoming obstacles to exercise starts with separating fact from fiction. Why we don't exercise question. I don't have enough time to exercise. Even short low impact intervals of exercise can act as a powerful tool to supercharge your health. If you have to eat me for a 15 minute walk with the dog, your body will thank you in many ways. Exercise is too difficult and painful. Consider no pain, no gain the old fashioned way of thinking about exercise. Exercise doesn't have to hurt to be incredibly effective. You don't have to push yourself to the limit to get results. You can build your strength and fitness by walking, swimming, even playing golf or cleaning the house. I'm too tired to exercise. Regular exercise is a powerful pick-me-up that can significantly reduce fatigue and make you feel much more energetic. If you're feeling tired, try taking a brisk walk or dancing to your favorite music and see how much better you feel afterwards. 
I'm too old to start exercising, I'm too fat, or my health isn't good enough. It's never too late to start building your strength and physical fitness, even if you're a senior or a self-confessed couch potato who has never exercised before. And exercise is a proven treatment for many diseases from diabetes to arthritis. Very few health or weight problems make exercise out of the question, so talk to your doctor about a safe routine for you. Reaping the benefits of exercise is easier than you think to reap the benefits of exercise. You don't need to devote hours out your busy day, train at the gym, sweat buckets, or run mile after monotonous mile. You can reap all the physical and mental health benefits of exercise with 30 minutes of moderate exercise 5 e team a week. Two 15-minute exercise sessions can also work just as well. If that still seems intimidating, don't despair. Even just a few minutes of physical activity are btt than none at all. If you don't have to me for 15 or 30 minutes of exercise, or if your body tells you to take a break after 5 or 10 minutes, for example, that's okay, too. Start with 5 or 10 minute sessions and slowly increase your time. The more you exercise, the more energy you'll have, so eventually you'll feel ready for a little more. The key is to commit to do some moderate physical activity. However little on most days. As exercising becomes habit. You can slowly add extra minutes or try different types of activities. If you keep at it, the benefits of exercise will begin to pay off. Moderate exercise means two things. That you breathe a little heavier than normal, but are not out of breath. 4. Example you should be able to chat with your walking partner, but not easily sing a song. That your body feels warmer as you move, but not overheated or very sweaty. Do I need different types of exercise? While any kind of exercise offers tremendous health benefits, different types of exercise focus more on certain aspects of your health. You can concentrate on one type of exercise or mix them up to add variety to your workouts and broaden the health benefits. Aerobic activities like running, cycling, and swimming strengthen your heart and increase your endurance. Strength training like weightlifting or resistance training builds muscle and bone. Mass improves balance and prevents falls. It's one of the best counters to frailty in old age. Flexibility exercises like stretching and yoga help prevent injury, enhance range of motion, reduce stiffness, and limit aches and pains. Easy exercise tip hash 1, move more in your daily life even if you don't have a 15 or 30 minute window to dedicate to yoga or a bike ride, that doesn't mean you can't add physical activity to your day. If you're not ready to commit to a structured exercise program, Think about physical activity as a lifestyle choice rather than a single task to check off your to-do list. Look at your daily routine and consider ways to sneak in activity here and there. Even very small activities can add up over the course of a day. In and around your home. Clean the house, wash the car, tend to the yard and garden, mow the lawn with a push mower, sweep the sidewalk or patio with a broom. At work and on the go. Look for ways to walk or cycle more. For example, bike. Or walk to an appointment rather than drive, banish all elevators and use the stairs, briskly walk to the bus stop then get off one stop early, park at the back of the lot and walk into the store or office, take a vigorous walk during your coffee break. Walk while you're talking on your cell phone. With friends or family. Walk or jog around the soccer field during your kids. Practice, make a neighborhood by cried part of weekend routine, play tag with your children in the yard or play exercise video games. While watching TV. Gently stretch while watching your favorite show, do. Push-ups, sit-ups or lift light weights during the commercial breaks you'll be amazed at how many repetitions you can fit in during the commercials of a half hour show. Better still, once a week turn off the TV and take a walk outside instead. Easy exercise tip hash 2, start slowly dash a little is better than nothing when we decide to begin exercising, 
many of us will rush out and join a gym or buy costly exercise equipment with a vow to working out every day. We may go to the gym once or twice, use the equipment a couple of times and then quickly lose motivation. The gym membership gathers dust and the exercise equipment is confined to the back of a closet. Exercise doesn't need to be such an all or nothing commitment. If you haven't exercised before or you've tried an exercise program in the past and been unable to stick with it, it's important not to set unrealistic goals. Committing to exercise for an hour a day in a gym may be too challenging at 5 RST, whereas commit ING to 10 minutes just 3 or 4 times a week is more manageable. Once these short windows of activity become a habit and you start experiencing the benefits, it's easier to progress to the next level. Tips for getting started in an exercise program. Take it slow. Start with an activity you feel comfortable doing, go at your own pace, and keep your expectations realistic. For example, training for a marathon when you've never run before may be a bit daunting. But you could give yourself the goal of party CPA TNG in an upcoming 5K walk for charity. Focus on short term goals, such as improving your mood and energy levels, and reducing stress, rather than goals such as weight loss or increased muscle size, as these can take longer to achieve. Make exercise a priority. It's one of the best things you can do for your physical and mental health and by making exercise a priority in your life, you'll be more likely to stick with it over the long term. If you have trouble fitting exercise into your schedule, consider it an important appointment with yourself and mark it on your daily agenda. Commit to an exercise schedule for at least three or four weeks so that it becomes habit, and force yourself to STCK with it. Even the busiest amongst us can find a 10-minute slot to pace up and down an office staircase or take the dog for a walk. Go easy on yourself. Do you feel bad about your body? Instead of being your own worst critic, try a new way of thinking about your body. No matter what your weight, age, or fitness level, there are others like you with the same goal of exercising more. Try surrounding yourself with people in your shoes. Take a class with others of a similar fitness level. Set easy goals for yourself to start with. Accomplishing even the smallest fitness goals will help you gain body confidence. Expect ups and downs. Don't be discouraged if you skip a few days or even a few weeks. It happens. Just get started again and slowly build up to your old momentum. Safety tips for beginning exercises. If you've never exercised before, or it's been a significant amount of time since you've attempted any strenuous physical activity, keep in mind the following general health precautions. Get medical clearance. If you have special health issues such as an existing heart condition or high blood pressure, talk with your doctor or health practitioner and let him or her know your plans. Stretch. No matter what form of exercise you choose you'll benefit from madding. Stretching exercises to gain flexibility and range of motion. Stretching to warm up and cool down is the best form of injury prevention for new exercisers. Drink plenty of water. Your body performs best when it's properly hydrated. Failing to drink enough water when you are exerting yourself over a prolonged period of time, especially in hot conditions, can be dangerous. Easy exercise tip hash 3, make exercise fun you are more likely to exercise if you find enjoyable, convenient activities. Give some thought to your likes and dislikes, and remember that preferences can change over time. Pair an activity you enjoy with you exercise there are numerous activities that qualify as exercise. The trick is to find something you enjoy that forces you to be active. Pairing exercise with another activity makes it easier and more fun. Simple examples include, take a dance or yoga class. Blast some favorite music and dance with your kids. Make a deal with yourself to watch your favorite TV shows while on the treadmill or stationary bike. Work out with a buddy, and afterwards enjoy coffee or a movie. Enjoy outdoor activities such as golf, playing frisbee, 
or even yard work or gardening. Make exercise a social activity. Exercise can be a fun time to socialize with friends and working out with others can help keep you motivated. For those who enjoy company but dislike competition, a running club, water aerobics, or dance class may be the perfect thing. Others may find that a little healthy competition keeps the workout fun and exciting. You might seek out tennis partners, join an adult soccer league, find a regular pickup basketball game, or join a volleyball team. For many, a workout partner can be a great motivator. For example, if you won't get out of bed to swim yourself, but you would never cancel on a friend, find a swim buddy. Easy exercise tip hash four. Stay motivated making lifestyle and behavior changes is not easy. It takes time and effort and you'll likely suffer some setbacks along the way. But over time, as you continue to exercise, you'll start to reap the physical and mental health benefits and improve your physical performance. You'll be able to exercise longer and harder and have the confidence to try new activities. Of course, no matter how much you enjoy an exercise routine, you may find that you eventually lose interest in it. That's the time to shake things up and try something new, add other activities to your exercise program, or alter the way you pursue the exercises that have worked so far. Set yourself goals and rewards Rewarding yourself for reaching an exercise goal is one of the best ways to stay motivated. Set an achievable goal regarding your participation and effort, not necessarily how much weight you can lift, miles you can bike, or pounds you can lose lost. If you stumble in your efforts, regroup and begin again. Reward yourself when you reach your goals a new pair of shoes, a dinner out, whatever works to motivate you. Other ways to keep your exercise program going. Be consistent. Make your workouts habitual by exercising at the same time every day, if possible. Eventually you will get to the point where you feel worse if you don't exercise. That dull, sluggish feeling fitness buffs get when they don't work out is a strong incentive to get up and go. Record your progress. Try keeping an exercise journal of your workouts. In a matter of months, it will be fun to look back at where you began. Keeping a log also holds you accountable to your routine. Keep it interesting. Think of your exercise session as time to yourself. Enjoy the time by listening to music, chatting with friends, and varying locations. Exercise around natural beauty, new neighborhoods, and special parks. Above all, avoid work out boredom by mixing it up and trying new routines. Spread the word. Talking to others about your fitness routines will help keep motivation strong and hold you accountable to your exercise program. You'll be delighted and inspired hearing ways your friends and colleagues stay active and on track. Who knows, you might even convince someone else to try to be more active. Get inspired. Read a health and fitness magazine or visit an exercise website and get inspired with photos of people being active. Sometimes reading about and looking at images of people who are healthy and fit can motivate you to move your body. Exercise safely. Nothing derails an exercise plan like an injury. Use common sense and don't exercise if you are ill. Wear brightly colored clothing to be visible on the roads. When the weather brings slippery conditions, walk at a mall indoors to prevent falling. The best thing about working out is that it gives you energy for more activities. When it becomes habit, you'll never want to give it up. I hope all the information I've given you has been useful. The way to staying energetic and getting rid of that pesky fatigue is by keeping your body and your mind in a good state of health and balance. The universe is surrounded by life energy and that same energy flows through your body. The advice and I have given you in this report will allow you to harness that energy and improve its flow, providing you more vibrancy in your life. Beyond the spiritual aspects of energy, your body also requires maintenance and care. Work with your body and your mind to ensure that it can provide you with all the energy you will ever need. Through methods I have already mentioned, 
detoxification, diet and nutrition, you will be able to go through life with a bounce in your step. Start your own schedule of activities and figure out which of these methods best suits your lifestyle and your needs. The effort required is minimal, but the payoff is monumental. You won't be disappointed. Get access to the full program here.